Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, this is the second part of our lecture on Vedas and Shula Sutras. Yesterday, we discussed what are Shula Sutra texts, so what are the characteristics of a Sulbakara which are defined in these texts. Then we introduced the Shulva theorem, so which is more popularly known as Pythagorean theorem. So, then we came to the applications of the Shulva theorem. So, we also saw the kind of rationale that can be seen behind the triplets that are given in the Bodhayana Shulva Sutra, Apastamba Shulva Sutra and so on. In uh, today's talk, we will start with the transformation of geometrical objects. For instance, so, we will start with uh, suppose there are uh, two squares, if you have to construct a square, so whose area will be the sum of these two squares or you can think of two squares and I want to find out a square, so which will be the difference of these two squares and if you have to construct a circle whose area is more or less the same as that of the square and so on and so forth. So, these are the kinds of problems which we will discuss today and we will also see, so in connection with this, so the expression for some of the certs. See this is a very common problem which one will be able to encounter, suppose I construct a shala, so in fact these are all uh, problems which one can see in the Shulva Sutra itself. So, so suppose a way that yes, a shala, Igni shala has to be constructed. So, of a certain area and I want to construct another Ajna Shala, so which will have twice the area of this. So, then you should be able to find a way by which you will be able to find out the value of root 2. So, if it is 3 times then root 3 and so on. So, these are uh, very common things. So, one way is to of course, geometrically find out the value of uh, root 2. So, they have given certain expressions for root 2, so which uh, is in the form of a sum of rational numbers. So, all those things we will be able to see today how the sutra, Sulva Sutra Karas arrived at these values approximation for root 2. Then towards the end of the talk, so I will be discussing what are known as chitis. So, chiti as I was mentioning is basically collecting things together, putting things together. So, we have several chitis which are listed Prauga chiti, Kanka chiti, so, Ratha Chakra Chiti, Shena Chiti and so on. So, these names are derived from the shape of the altar in which it is constructed. So, Shena Chiti for instance, Shena means a falcon. So, the Chiti is constructed in the form of a falcon bird, so and so on and so forth. So, this is how uh, the names of various types of Chitis and the purpose of these Chitis are also stated. So, we will discuss all these topics today this is where I stopped yesterday. So, Nana Chaturashre Samasyan Kaniyasah Karanya Varishiyaso Vridha Mullikhe Vridhasya Akshnaya Rajuhu Samasyatoho Parshvamani Bhavati. So, Chaturashra as I said is square Samasyan means desirous of putting together, Samasanam means putting together. So, Kaniyasaha, so Kaniyan refers to smaller one and uh, Varshiyasaha refers to the larger one. So, what he says is if you have two squares say A, B, C, D and then C, G, H, I. So, you want to construct a square, so which will be the sum of the these two squares basically the area of the larger square. So, this is a simple uh, instruction which tells you how to go about. So, without even thinking of the uh, arithmetic which is involved in that. So, you have a square, you have another smaller square, you just uh, 
do a certain uh, trick here and you should be able to get the value of the larger square without doing any calculation, numerical calculation. So, all that it says is, so you think of this smaller square C g, Karani here refers to the side C g for instance. So, Karanya Varshiya Saha, so you just think of placing this square there or marking C g in the larger square B, Vridram Ullikhet. So, the term Vridra can be understood to be a sort of rectangle here. So, this rectangle is B E F A Ullikhet. So, then it says Vridrasya Akshnaya Rajuhu, Akshnaya Rajuhu is A E. So, the diagonal. All that the sutra says is this Akshnaya Rajuhu will give you the side of the square that you desire. So, this is all the sutra is. Is that fine? So, now if you look at this, so A E square is basically A B square plus C G square, okay. A B square plus C G square. So, there is something which is interesting that emerges out of it. So, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes on that. So, generally uh, all these texts just state the rule. So, this is how the structure goes. So, some European scholars are actually puzzled whether uh, these people knew the proofs or they did not know the proofs. Okay. This has been a question which has been discussed at great length and uh, what we can easily see is the Shulakaras, though they did not explicitly give proofs of these various procedures, it is quite implicit in the procedure itself. For instance, in the previous thing, so if you look at the sum of these two areas can be conceived like this, see A B E, it can be conceived of various triangles A B E, A E F plus and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at this, so this triangle A B E if it is sort of chopped off and rotated, so that A D K, it turns into A D K. So, you have to just rotate it at A and then think of this triangle H E G and if you rotate it around H, so this will go and occupy the space H K I. So, this is essentially the proof of Pythagoras theorem the so called Pythagoras theorem. In fact, this proof has been discussed in Yukti Bhasha too. So, the procedure which has been given in the Sulva Sutra, so amounts to the proof or rather I would say the proof is implicit in the procedure that has been described there. Otherwise, I mean that is that instruction does not make any sense. With this, I will proceed uh, further to discuss certain other interesting things. So, before proceeding to that, I will introduce you to certain terms which will be frequently occurring in Chulva Sutras, which have slightly different connotations in different contexts. So, that should be clarified. So, that I mean if you read later some of the Chulva Sutras, these terms become quite clear to you. The term Karani has been used in different senses in different contexts. So, suppose it is a compound word, it slightly means different things. Here, I wanted to clarify taking a sutra itself from the Katyayana Shulva Sutra. In Katyayana Shulva Sutra, we have this Karani, Tatkarani, Tiryangmani, Parshvamani, Akshnaya, Cheti, Rajjavaha. Rajjuhu means God. So, all that the sutra says is, these are five names which have been assigned to the God that you keep using in different contexts. Okay. So, Karani, sometimes Tatkarani, Tiryangmani, Parshvamani, Akshnaya. So, all that refer to the cards. So, in fact, the commentator Mahidhara clarifies, so what do these terms mean? So, Karani, so he says Kriyate Kshetra Parichedaha Anaya Iti Karani. So, Kshetra Parichedaha, Parichedaha means a certain limitation, okay. so or measurement, Kshetra Parichedaha Anaya Kriyate Iti Karani. So, Tatkarani, so you will find in various places the terms like Dvikarani, Trikarani and so on. So, this Dvikarani actually means root 2, Trikarani means root 3. The term has been defined as Tatkshetram Dvaigunyadi Kriyate Anaya, it is Dvikarani. See Dvaigunyadi means, see you want to find out twice the area of this. So, the side has to be root 2 obviously, 
So, that is how the term Dvikarani, similarly root 3 and so on. Okay. Tiryangmani, so Prachi Sutrantayoho Tiryag Vartamanam Rajudvayam. See, suppose you consider a line, so the perpendicular line, okay. so that is called Tiryangmani. So, that is how the even the Bodha and Sula Sutra, one is called Parshvamani, the other is called Tiryangmani, that which is sort of perpendicular. So, Parshvamani and Tiryangmani, then Akshnaya. So, this is an interesting uh, derivation which has been presented for the word Akshnaya. Akshivadu Kshetram Nayati the Akshnaya. So, Akshnaya, so suppose you think of a rectangle and the diagonal is referred to as Akshnaya. So, this diagonal splits this into two halves. So, Akshi means I. So, it splits the geometrical object into two halves like two eyes. I mean that is the kind of uh, derivation that has been presented for the word Akshnaya here. Basically, Tatoha Akshnaya iti Kona Sutra Rajuhu. Kona Sutra means two opposite corners. So, that which connects the two opposite corners is what is referred to as Akshnaya. Okay. So, Karani as I was mentioning, this is very frequently encountered. So, Kaniya Sah Karanya Varshi Yaso Vridha Mulliket. So, the sutra which I was quoting before. So, Karani here refers to this side. Okay. So, if area is A, obviously Karani will be root A. Okay. So, it is in that sense. So, similarly, Karani is used as square root. Padam Tiryang Mani Tripada Parshvamani Tasyakshnaya Rajuhu Dasha Karani as I was mentioning. Dasha Karani means root 10. Okay. Dasha Karani it is used in this sense. So, this root 10 will produce a square which has the area 10. So, Dasha Karoti. So, it is in this sense, I mean this is how it is used. Karani is also used in the sense of a certain measure. For instance, in this sutra, which we will discuss once more little later in greater detail. Karanim Trithiyena Vardhayet Tat Chaturthena Atma Chatustrimshonena this is a sutra which presents you the value of root 2. Okay. So, there the word Karani is used in the sense of a certain unit of measurement. Okay. Okay. Now, I move on to discuss the sutra which gives you the procedure by which you will be able to find out the side of a square which is going to be the difference of two squares unequal squares. So, earlier we saw sutra which gave the procedure for finding the sum of two squares here it is a difference. So, chaturashra chaturashram nirjihirshan. So, nirjihirshan means nirhartum ichan. Okay. This is how the word is derived. So, one who is desirous of removing nirhartum. Okay, you have a square, you want to remove a square from it. So, then he says, Yavan nirjihirshet tasya karanya varshi yasaha vridha mulliket. See, Yavan nirjihirshet, whatever be the measure that you want to remove, the measure of the square you want to remove from this. So, tasya karanya means by the measure of that you mark something in the larger square. For instance, in this diagram, suppose you have the square A, B, C, D, you want to remove a certain area, so which is given by A, E, G, H. Okay. So, X is V. So, that X is referred to as Karani. Yavan nirjihirshe tasya karanya varshiya saha vridha mulliket. Vridha mulliket means mark that A, E and then draw a line. Okay. Vridhasva parshvamanim akshnaya itarat parshvam upasam haret. This is a very clear prescription. So, all that it says is, so from here you just make an arc. So, this itarat parshva is the other side. Okay. From one side you just drag it and take it to the other side. Sa yatra nipatet. So, wherever it falls, tad apachindyat, may you cut it. Okay. So, chinnaya nirastam. So, once you do that, so what you will get is basically the area of uh, the square, which is the difference of the two squares, if you construct. So, A p is the measure, so which gives the 
side of the difference of the two squares. So, how does it work out? We can easily see this. See, so A p square. So, in this just consider this triangle A e p. So, A p square is so E p square minus A e square. Okay. Now, this E p is same as A d so by construction, right. All that we see here is just an application of this Sulva theorem, right. So, this A p is directly gives you the side of the difference of the two squares. Okay. So, this is the prescription of uh, Bodha and Shulva Sutra for constructing a square which is the difference of two squares. So, this is a very important thing. In fact, this principle is invoked in uh, doing certain other kind of transformation which I will be showing in the next slide. So, this should be quite clear. All that we need to do is we have to just mark in the larger square. So, whatever be the uh, side of the smaller square and then take a vridra and then do this, so then we will be able to get the other square. Transforming a rectangle into a square, so this is the next problem. So, the sutra goes like this, dirgha chaturashram samachaturashram chikirshan, so, dirgha chaturashra is a rectangle, samachaturashram chikirshan you want to transform into a square. Samachaturashram chikirshan. Chikirsha, by the way, is kartumicha. You want to do that. Okay. So, tiryangmanim karanim kritva. So, as I mentioned earlier, the one is called parshvamani, the other is called tiryangmani. Okay. So, perpendicular to that. So, all that it says is take tiryangmani as the karani and then shesham dvidha vibhajet. So, let us consider this diagram and understand the sutra. So, we have A B C D is rectangle. Now, we want to transform this rectangle into a square. So, there is a certain prescription which is given in the sutra. So, it says, so this has two sides which are unequal. So, one is A B, the other is B C. So, A B is Parshvamani, B C is Tiryangmani. So, all that the sutra says is tiryangmanim karanim kritva. So, take the measure of tiryangmani which is AD and then mark it. Okay. So, this will be the xy line. So, you take this AB. So, AB is a and then you mark. So, AX is marked and xy is the chopped off portion. So, the remaining portion xy BC, so that should be split into two halves. Sesham dvidha vibhajya, dvidha vibhajya means dividing into two. Parshva yoho upadadhyat, parshva means to the side of it you place. So, all that you do is take one of them and then place it here. Okay. So, khandam, so there is a small portion which is remaining here. So, this khandam avapena sampurayet tasya nirharaha uktaha. So, this nirhara See in the previous sutra, yeah. So nirjihirshan, you saw that, right? So it is basically nirhartu michan. So how this is to be done is something which has been stated before. So for instance, if you look at the sutra number, so this is 2.2. So this is so 2.5. So nirharaha vukta means it has been stated before. So basically, the procedure which was adopted before has to be understood and uh, so you have to apply that procedure here in order to get this. So, what was the procedure adopted there? See, so if you look at, so we basically took this and then, so Akshnaya, so he said you have to draw this line and then take it to the other side, see, itarat parshma upasamharet, so that is all was the procedure which was described here, so that is all we need to do here. So, we have to just take this line and then take it there and then drop it. So, what you will get is basically this d p. Okay. So, that is going to be the side of this and that is what the square is. So, by simply taking this you just hit at this point and uh, the strip which is found here will basically occupy this area. So, that is the procedure. So, that is what is referred to as tasya nirharaha vuktaha. Nirharaha means see this, this problem can be visualized the other way also. 
So, if you think of the square, all that I need is, so this is what is extra here. So, in the constructed square, you can think of removing this. So, removing this, what is the square that is going to be obtained by me? So, that is essentially this. So, that is what is referred to by Nirharaha Uktaha. The procedure to get that has been stated earlier. So, this is the procedure for transforming a rectangle into a square. So, to construct a square that is n times a given square, this is a very interesting problem. So, which has been discussed and which incidentally gives you a certain way by which you can find out the value of root n, the value of cert. So, whatever n can be. So, very simple and uh, very instructive procedure, so which one can find in the Shulva Sutra, Katyayana Shulva Sutra. In fact, yesterday I referred to one of this, I will recall that quickly now. So, the problem is this, you want to basically find out the value of root n, how do you go about? The Sutra says, Yavat Pramanani Samachaturashrani Yeki Kartum Chikirshet. So, it has been posed in a slightly different way. Suppose you have n squares, Yavat Pramanani, so as much as you want. Okay. So, Yavat Pramanani Samachaturashrani squares Yeki Kartum Chikirshet. So, you want to find out the area which will be given by these n squares. So, how do you construct a square which will have the area of the sum of these n squares? So, this is the most general way of stating the problem. Yavat Tavat, as much so much. Okay. So, Yavat Pramanani Samachaturashrani Eki Kartum Chikirshet Yekonani Tani Bhavanti. So, Yekona means, so remove one from that. Okay. Here, uh, we let us look into this diagram. So, he basically tells that you have to conceive of a certain triangle, wherein the side of the triangle, one of the sides, so which can be considered as the base, so is n minus 1 times, see a konani. Okay. So, then the other two sides, so have to be of this measure, n plus 1 into a by 2 and n plus 1 into a by 2. So, what would be the perpendicular dropped from a? will be root n times a. When we put it in the form of uh, algebraic equation, so in this figure, so B d is equal to half of B c that is n minus 1 by 2 into a. We consider this triangle a b d. Okay. So, then the equation is this. So, a d square, see. So, a d square is the difference of these two and uh, a b is n plus 1 by 2 into a the whole square and b d is n minus 1 by 2 into a the whole square. So, the difference of these two square basically is n a square which is a d square. So, from this what you get is basically the value of root n. So, the problem has been posed as uh, problem of constructing a square, so whose area will be n times the area of smaller square, whatever be the dimension, this is what you are going to get. Okay. See uh, in all these things, so what see yesterday I was mentioning that uh, this uh, Sulva theorem or Bodhayana theorem, so which is generally referred to as Pythagorean theorem. So, is what is under operation. So, in all these transformations, so see for instance this whether you want to sum it up, whether you want to find the difference. So, the underlying principle happens to be the Bodhayana theorem. Okay. Now, we move on to another problem which has been the most difficult problem for which many scholars from all civilizations have been breaking their head. So, suppose you just say I want to have a square whose area is same as that of a circle or I want to have a circle whose area is same as that of a square. 
So, some kind of uh, prescription which is found in the Sulva Sutra is what we are going to discuss now. So, Chaturashram Mandalam Chikirshan. So, this word Chikirshan so is desirous of doing. So, this in every sutra you will find this. Okay. So, Chaturashram Mandalam, Mandalam is circle, Chikirshan. So, you want to transform a square into a circle. Okay. So, what is to be done? So, he says Akshnayardham Madhyat Prachim Abhyapatayet. So, Akshnaya as I was repeatedly telling is the diagonal line. Akshnayardham means half of it. Let us look into this diagram A, B, C, D. So, this is the square and I want to get a circle. So, whose area will be more or less same as this, this square. Okay. So, Akshnayardham Madhyat Prachim Abhyapatayet. See, Prachi, see usually they conceive of the diagrams constructed with the directions marked on one edge. See, this is how we do in all these uh, plans, elevations, whatever we do, you mark this. So, similarly, you can think of see this to be the prachi. Okay. So, the sutra goes like this Akshnayartham is half of the diagonal which is OD. So, this it says mad prachim abhyapatayet. So, you just take it to this line. So, it uh, you can think of it to be OE now. So, I have rotated it and brought it there. Yadyad atishishyate. Atishishyate means that which is uh, remaining above. See, when OD becomes OE, so something is protruding out of this. So, that is what is referred to as atishesha here. So, yadyad atishishyate, whatever remains. So, here it is ME. Tasya sahatritiyana mandalam parilikhet. Tasya means that portion ME, tritiyana one third of it. Okay. Tasya sahatritiyana mandalam parilikhet. So, what does this prescription amount to? So, let us look into the details which have been jotted down here. See, AB let us say is 2A, the side of the square is 2A. So, OP is the radius of the circle whose area is going to be roughly same as that of the square. So, OD is equal to root 2A obviously. So, then ME is root 2A minus A. So, that is the portion that is Atishesha which is exceeding. So, the sutra said one third of this see one third of it has to be added to that one third. So, which is basically P m. So, P m is one third of this. So, what it amounts to is the radius is A by 3. Okay. So, half the side is A. So, A by 3 of 2 plus root 2. So, this is what is the prescription which has been given in Bodha and Sulva Sutra for transforming a square into a circle. So, how accurate it is? So, let us see little later. Okay. So, in this we find root 2 appearing. So, you know the value of A, but you do not know what root 2 is. So, if you have a way to find out root 2, so then you will be immediately able to compute this. See, if you look at, so this sutra is 2.9, a couple of sutras later Bodhayana presents another sutra, so which gives the value of root 2. So, pramanam tritiyena vardhayet tat chaturthena atma chatustrimshena vunena savisheshaha. So, mark the word savishesha. It says pramana, pramana is basically some unit. See, pramana, you just take mana, pramana, some unit measurement. Pramanam 1, tritiyena vardhayet. So, means one third of it you have to add. Pramanam then tat chaturthena. So, this tat refers to that which is immediately preceding. So, one fourth of that. So, one fourth of one third. So, tat chaturthena. Then it says atma chatustrimshena unena. See. So, chatustrimsha is 34, una is subtraction, okay, negative kind of a thing. So, you have to subtract 
134 of that. Okay, see the atma here refers to 1 by 3 into 4. So atma chatustrimshena unena. Okay, so you have to subtract this, and the word savishesha, as I was mentioning, so it means so it is not exact value. So savishesha is sort of approximate value. Okay, so this amounts to 1. Point 414215 and uh, this I think is correct to 6 decimal places. Okay. So, this is what uh, is the sutra which gives the value of root 2 in Bodha and Shulva sutra. We will see soon. So, how Bodhayana might have arrived at this expression for root 2. So, as I mentioned this Savishesha has been studied in more greater detail and further refinements have been presented in one of the commentaries. So, there are several explanations which have been offered by various scholars who studied this sutra and uh, what we will be presenting here is a certain geometrical way of arriving at this expression for root 2 which we find in both and Shulva sutra. In fact, later Professor Srinivas may be uh, telling you how this can be obtained so, from a different kind of a problem which is called Varga Prakriti. Okay. So, that may be touched upon later as you go through the course. So, this uh, geometrical construction is quite instructive and uh, in fact, uh, recently I read one of the articles I think. Uh, so, Henderson I think from the Columbia University or so, he studied this problem when he visited India and he came up with a very interesting paper. So, wherein he mentions, uh, he also points out, it is not that others have not pointed out, he also points out in his own way as to how this uh, expression for instance. So, this meaning of the word Savishesha as I said is only approximate. So, which means there is some other term which can be added. So, is it ever going to end? So, it is never going to end. So, even from the geometry you can see that, uh, so if you just keep on doing this process, so, you will be ending up with a smaller and smaller square. So, let me describe this first. So, we want to find the side of the square which will be the sum of two squares. So, A, B, C, D and B, E, F, C are the two squares which we consider. So, the second square B, E, F, C is first split into three parts that is what this one third you understand and the third part you further divide into 3. Okay. So, you this is further divided into 4 parts see 1 by 3 into 4. Okay. So, you just place all this in 4 places and these 4 you just place here. So, this goes there and occupies. So, in this square A P Q R, so there is a certain void here at this point. So, if you say that the side of the square is going to be, so 1 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 into 4, so there is a certain void and that has to be sort of subtracted and uh, how is this value corresponding to the void here that I will show in the next slide. This portion is 1 by 3 into 4, so because one third of it and this is divided into 4 that is going to be this distance. So, the area of this void is 1 by 3 into 4 square. So, I remove a small strip from this, so that this small strip corresponds to this area. So, this is how I pose the problem. So, suppose a strip of brit B is considered. So, two strips basically one strip along this side and then see this is the strip which I have marked here. So, 2 b into 1 plus 1 by 3 plus this minus b square. So, this will be the uh, left hand side and if you equate, so if you ignore b square, so you can easily see that. So, b is 1 by 3 into 4 into 34. Okay. So, this again is an approximation because I have ignored b square. So, in getting this estimate and this can be extended at all levels. Okay. So, now this b happens to be see 1 by 
3 into 4. So, at the next level it will be 1 by 3 into 4 into 34 square kind of a thing and so on and so forth. So, this can be extended. So, the expression that is given in the Sula Sutras. So, this is a very interesting expression in the sense that you will find 3 here, the same 3 appearing added with a 4 and then 3 4 into 34. The next term I think will be 3 into 4 into 34 into 1154 or something like that and this can go on and on. Okay. So, this is a sort of uh, rational uh, appro approximation for the third, so which will be recurring. So, we saw in the previous slides, so when uh, this problem of transforming a square into a circle, we had the expression for the radius to be, radius is a by 3 into 2 plus root 2 and how did they find out root 2? that also we saw. So, this is what we saw, the radius is this. So, if we sort of impose the constraint as I mentioned earlier that uh, this circle has to have the same area as the square, so which was transformed, then we have the equation pi r square should be equal to 4 a square. right? So, we took the side to be 2 a and that should be pi r square as we understand today. So, what has been given as r is this expression. So, if we use the value of root 2 which has been shown by the Sulvakara himself, then the value of pi turns out to be approximately this okay, in this prescription which has been given. Hmm? Okay. So, I discussed about root 2, so a similar thing can be done for root 3 also. See. So, we can have a similar geometrical construction. So, the expression will be something 1 plus 2 by 3 see, plus 1 by 3 into 5 minus 1 by 3 into 5 into 52 and so on and so forth. I think this should be uh, quite clear from uh, the description that was given for root 2, it is a very similar uh, diagram. So, wherein you have 3 squares considered see a b c d b e h c and then e f g h. If we have to add two thirds of it on both sides and then that is why we have this 2 by 3 and then one fifth of it. So, that this is creates a certain void and by formulating an equation which is similar to the equation which was described you will get 2 3. So, this has been stated by in fact, the Datta Vibhushti Bhushan Datta in his signs of Sulvas. So, we have the inverse problem. So, earlier we discussed the problem of transforming a square into a circle, if we invert the problem. So, you have a circle, so that has to be transformed into a square and for that we have an expression of uh, this form which is given in the Sulva Sutras. Mandalam Chaturashram Chikirishan Vishkambham, Vishkambham means diameter, see Vishkambham Vistara, Vishkambha, Vyasa all of them refer to diameter. So, Vishkambham Ashtavu Bhagan Krutva, see Ashtavu Bhagan is one eighth of it, so split, so make it into eight, divide by eight. So, Bhagam Ekona Trimshad Havi Bhajya, see Ekona Trimshad is twenty nine, so you divide further by one twenty nine. One can see that, that this is exactly the inverse of that and all the numbers will become evident. So, I will just leave this and I will proceed to other topics. The form is something which is very interesting that is what I want to tell once more see 1 by 8, 1 by 8 into 29 and this uh, very interesting form I think you can see the rationale perhaps once you study this Varga Prakriti. One does not know whether they knew Varga Prakriti and then arrived at this form, but anyway one of the one of the ways is geometrical ways the other is the other way. All that we find is this interesting expression in the Sulva Sutras. So, now I move on to another topic for which, so all these mathematical tools have been invented by the Sulvakaras. So, this is what is called Chiti as I was mentioning repeatedly. So, this Chiti is basically a altar, sacrificial altar, okay. so wherein lot of bricks etcetera are put together and a certain platform is created. So, Chiti, so Chiyate Asyamiti Chitihi. 
So, this is how the etymological derivation of the word chiti goes. So, in fact, uh, for those who are more interested in uh, knowing the details, so chiti samrit yadana yo, this is how the word has been defined in the Vyakarana text. Okay. So, these sacrificial altars are primarily for two purposes, one is for kamya karma, the other is sort of nitya karma. Okay. Both in nitya karma, so in fact Agnihotra itself is considered as a nitya karma, wherein you have various kundas. So, one will be in the form of circle, the other is in the form of semicircle, the other will be in the form of square. So, the area of all the three has to be same, I mean that is how it is sort of constructed. Anyway, so and there are various kamya karmas. So, kamya means uh, that which is desired, an action which is performed to fulfill a certain desire. So, all these kamya karmas have been uh, prescribed to be performed in chitis of different shapes. See, for instance, prauga chiti, it will be in the form of isosceles triangle, ubhayat of prauga, a sort of rhombus, ratha chakra chiti, see, in the form of a chariot wheel, drona chiti. So, drona basically refers to a certain kind of vessel, okay. So, in the form of a water jar, kurma chiti, so tortoise, chena chiti in the form of a. So, that is one thing. The other interesting part which one finds even in the Vedas is, so a, a particular uh, person, so this Vedic priest performs a certain chiti on a particular year. Suppose he wants to perform this in the next year. So, then they say, so the height of the altar has to increase. We have this mantra sahasran chinvita. So, in these chitis basically have 5 layers. So, the number of bricks in a particular layer will be 200. So, this is one constraint which is said. The second constraint will be the area of this, see whatever be it, whether it is ratha chakra chiti, whether it is drona chiti, whether it is kanka chiti, whether it is kurma chiti. So, you have to have a certain area, and the area is basically measured in terms of the purusha, so the person height. So, that also will be fixed. So, this is one constraint is area, the second constraint is 200 bricks. And uh, the third thing that is prescribed is, so 1000 bricks have to be there. So, which means automatically there will be 5 layers, okay. so 200 in each layer. So, for it to have stability obviously, you should have bricks arranged in alternatively. So, the same kind of bricks if you arrange all of them will collapse. So, therefore, that we will see little later. Now, so, what it says is sahasram chinvita means you have to perform it with 1000 bricks in the first year. So, next year time if you want to perform, then it says dvisahasram chinvita, third time if you want trisahasram chinvita. So, it goes like that. This is also found in uh, these Vedas as to the purpose for which a particular chiti has to be done. For instance, chandas chitam chinvita pashukamaha, if you are desirous of having large number of cattle, then you perform this. Shena chitan chinvita swarga kamaha, so prauga chitan chinvita bhrataruvyavan. So, bhrataruvya, so you should not confuse with uh, bhrata, bhrata means brother, bhrataruvya means enemy. Sometimes bhrata may turn into bhrataruvya, that is a different thing, but uh, this bhrataruvya means so, uh, enemy, okay. So, not well wisher, but ill wisher. So, bhrataruvyavan. So, these are, these are all various prescriptions, see. So, ratha chakra chitan chinvita, so if you are desirous, see grama kamaha, if you are desirous of having, so large areas which are under your possession, so then this, so various chitis have been prescribed for various purposes. Then as I was mentioning earlier, so this height of the chiti, see, so they say janu daghran chinvita, janu means this knee. So, janu dakhana means up to the knee. Prathamam chin vanaha, when you perform it for the first time. Then it says nabhi dakhanan chin vita, nabhi is up to this belly kind of thing. Dvitiyan chin vanaha, then griva dakhanan chin vita, up to neck, okay. Tritiyam chin vanaha, if you do it third time. So, this is how the prescription goes in Vedas, okay, this Taitriya Samhita. Then, it also says vaya samba esha pratimaya chiyate. So, pratima means a sort of uh, the shape, image, okay. So, usually suppose you have a certain idol, it is called pratima, okay. So, an image of something. 
So, vayasamva esha pratimiya chiyate means so you you create the altar. So, this vayasam so does not refer to age, see vayasaha, vayasa means those birds which fly. Okay. So, you have to construct the altar in the form of a bird. Okay. Um, so, this is a sort of prescription which one finds in the Saitriya Samhita. So, what is this bird? So, there are other uh, statements which are found in various Brahmanas. So, I will just uh, cite a couple of them and then proceed further. See, Athaisha Shena Yatha Shena Adhita Yavameva Yenam Yetena Adate Yathavi Sheno Nipatya Adate Yavameva Ayam Dushantam Bhatruvyam Nipatya Adate. So, this Nipatya means so coming down swiftly and then taking off. See, so it is like a falcon, so with its wings spread. Okay. So, it comes down uh, swiftly, so pounces on something, grabs and then proceeds. So, it is a sort of metaphorical description. So, once you perform the sacrifice, so as it comes and takes it, so, so too all your wishes will be just fulfilled and then, so, so that is the kind of uh, description. Dvishantam Bhraturvya, so the one who hates you, Dvishantam Bhraturvyam Nipatya Adatte, so too once you perform this. So, these enemies will also be sort of finished something like that. Okay. Uh, in this connection, so various uh, measures have been specified, see. So, from a very small to purusha, see angula is one of the small dimensions and uh, what is angula? So, it says chaturdasha anavaha, 14 anus constitute a certain angula and you can also specify in terms of tila, so which is much smaller unit. So, they say 34 tilas constitute one angula and then this goes on this table, see 10 angulas makes, see all that has been very clearly stated, shudra padam, so this is shudra padam, then dvadasha pradeshaha, so pradesha matra, okay. so all that will be. In fact, uh, usually people say pradesha matra means you have to just stretch your hand, so the, in Tamil they say ursan, okay. So, that will be roughly 12 angulas. Okay. So, this is how it goes and then he goes up to a purusha. So, it starts with angula and then goes up to purusha. Purusha means a, a human being, okay, the height of a, a human being. So, this measure, so if you just take this angula and then, so if you see that, so everything is with reference to one purusha. Okay. So, finally, the measurements will be given in terms of purushas, larger measurements. Okay. So, how much should be the width and uh, breadth of a uh, vedi, okay. so the entire sacrificial place, ground. So, they will all be specified in terms of purusha. So, if you are the performer, then your height will be measured and the vedi will be constructed based on that. It, now, we will uh, quickly run through a few slides, wherein uh, the shapes of various bricks have been given in great detail. So, all the measurements etcetera are stated here. I will not spend much time here. This, uh, for instance, if you want to construct a Shena Chiti, the Shena Chiti itself of various types. So, one particular Shena Chiti is what I have described here in these slides. So, Shena Chiti 1. There are several types of bricks. So, 1, 2, 3, see. So, you can see this one half of it, and therefore, you have this root 2 times and uh, one half again. Okay. So, this is one set of bricks. If you put them together, so, you get another kind of a shape. Okay. So, this this B phi is called Hamsa Mukhi, see, as you can see. So, now slowly you can see. So, this is the body of the Shena and this is the head of the Shena. So, this is the Shena Chiti. <laughs> so, you can see. So, this see this is what was shown earlier. So, this is the head. So, this is the body, this is the wing and this is called tail. So, you can see that, so it is made up of basically 5 types of bricks. Total number of bricks as I was mentioning should be 200. So, this is the constraint. So, head will have 14 bricks, body will have 46 bricks, wings 108, tail 32, and the total. So, these are the 5 types of bricks. See, all that has been very, very clearly stated in the sutras. See, Shirasi Chatur Dasha, see 14. See, dva trimshat puche. So, 32 tiles will go in creating the tail of this. Pakshayoho, see, ashtot, pakshayoho ashtashatam, 
the 108. So, all that has been stated. So, this is the second layer. The second layer will be such that see no two tiles will be exactly fitting. See, they will be so uh, sort of interstice will be filled with the second layer, and uh, this also has 200, but they are quite different. See, head has only 10 here, and the body has 48. So, in the previous, if you see, it has 14 and 46. So, this is made up of only four types of bricks. So, these four types they constitute the second layer. The third layer will be again the first layer, fourth layer will be this and fifth layer. So, this is how the uh, this is constructed. Okay. So, regarding the fabrication of bricks also, there are some specifications in the Sula Sutras. See, this is all some interesting things. So, it says Parna Kashaya Nishpakwa Eta Apo Bhavanti Semne Veva. Kashaya means extraction, you know. So, kashaya when we say, so it is sort of extraction created out of various herbs. So, it is in that sense they use us. So, parna kashaya nishpakka eta apo bhavanti. See, so in uh, making these bricks, you have to add various extractions. So, it is primarily to uh, add more strength to the brick. So, then it, he says, atha ajalomaihi samsrijati sthemne in veva. This themne and veva is something which is repeated in every sutra. So, means to add more strength to that. Okay. So, ajaloma is samsrijati. Samsrijati means mixes. So, ajaloma, loma is hair, okay. the hair of goat. So, it is like uh, today this uh, fiber reinforced, we say. No? So, they are, they are the fibers. Okay. So, to add uh, strength to that, ajaloma is samsrijati, themne and veva. Then he says, Sarkar, Ashmaho, Rasahatena, Samsrijati and so on. So, there are various things so which are added and uh, it also specifies that once you fabricate the brick and it gets dried, so the dimension of the brick will be reduced. Okay. So, it says, Ishtakaha, Shoshapaka, Bhyam, Trimshan Mana to Hiyate. So, Trimshan Mana, I mean, he just says one thirtieth of the size will be reduced, some kind of a prescription which has been <coughs> given here. And therefore, in trying to create an altar, you have to consider this factor also into account. Okay. So, this is what is stated. And yet, Choshapakabhyam Parikhraset Purishena Tatu Sampurayet. See, when uh, constructing, so you have to consider how much gap you have to create so that, I mean you fill those gaps so that so the dimension is sort of uh, met with when you constructed the whole altar. Okay. Then certain other prescriptions, bhedan varjayet, see when you construct, so you do not give much gaps. Okay. So, otherwise the area criteria which has been stated for this will not be fulfilled. Then Adharot prayoho parsha sandhanam bheda iti upadishanti. So, what is this bheda that I am talking about between the two layers, whatever be the joint? So, then he says, Amrun mai bhihi anishtaka bhihi na sankhyam puraye. This is another prescription. See, this is an interesting prescription in the sense that uh, see, when you create a certain structure, so you should see to it that more or less the same kind of material is used. If you use a completely different material, then this will not stick with that, and therefore he says, Amrun mai bhihi anishtaka bhihi. Ishtaka is basically a brick made out of clay. So, Amrun mai, so that which is not made out of clay, you should not be using here. So, all these prescriptions have been given. So, with a few observations, we will uh, end our talk on Vedas and Sula Sutras. As uh, you would have seen, the Primary purpose for which the Sulva Sutra text came into existence is to see that you have very clear rules which are stated, which will facilitate us in constructing altars. Constructing this uh, fireplaces and altars of different sizes and shapes. So, and in this connection, both construction as well as transformation. Okay. So, if you construct a certain kunda, so which is Garhapatya and you will have another thing which will be of a different shape. So, you should have the same and therefore, this is equivalent to transforming one into the other. So, this is the primary purpose, but this was not the purpose for which the 
geometry got developed in other civilizations. And I also demonstrated that uh, how Bodhayana would have arrived at the different triplets which has been mentioned by him and uh, how the proof of these sutras are implicitly in invo involved in the procedures which have been delineated for various constructions or transformation of one figure into another figure. So, this was uh, demonstrated. And uh, regarding the antiquity of uh, this uh, Bodhayana Sulva Sutra, see this is another thing which we need to remember. So, in this tradition, we see that it has been a oral tradition and therefore, any proof would have been conveyed by the teacher to the taught, though not explicitly available in the sutras themselves. And regarding antiquity, so though we find various triplets in uh, this uh, Babylonian uh, uh, cuneiform tablets, but there is no general statement like the Bodhayana theorem in any of these other traditions. So, regarding Pythagoras, so Pythagorean theorem, so many careful people they use Pythagorean, whether Pythagoras was directly involved or not we do not know and therefore, they call it Pythagorean. And uh, these Shulva Sutra texts are primarily meant for assisting the Vedic priests, okay. that is the purpose of this. So, let me reiterate that. And, uh, but looking at this, we also are able to get a picture of the kind of the mathematics which was involved and how it got developed, so in the antiquity. So, at least 2500 years from now, so much before that. And we also see the use of fractions, for instance, in the expression for root 2, 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 into 4, 1 by 3 into 4 into 34. So, all that they are all very interesting things which are found. And the value of root 2 is of remarkable accuracy. And we also saw the use of algebra which is involved. For instance, suppose you wanted to find out that construction in Katya and Sulva Sutra. So, it is impossible for us to find out Yavat Pramana, Tavat Pramana root n. So, without the algebra which is involved, so, this prescription cannot be given, a lot of aesthetic sense also getting into. So, we have uh, various shapes of altars, Drona Chiti, Kanka Chiti, Ratha Chakra Chiti and so on. As regards this Chitis, so it has been found uh, that around 200 BCE, so we find a Shena Chiti construction. So, in the excavations at Kosambi, people have found. So, these are certain references. Thank you.